Hi guys, we're back and this is now for the new nurse assessment, a very important tool. We all know in the clinical setting that we assess patients, but knowing how to approach a specific situation with a specific patient is extremely important. So let's get started. This is the admission Melinda left for the night nurse, which means she did not do her assessment. Pay close attention to what happens next. Melinda goes as the nurse and goes to the patient. She's saying, Steve, what's up? I keep talking and getting no response. Naturally, he couldn't respond because Steve was a diabetic. And the night, the day nurse did not do an assessment. He was given insulin and she never took the trouble to notice that he did not eat his dinner. So what happens? He had an insulin reaction and he could possibly be in a coma. Hence the reason it's important to assess your patient. Before going home, she should have assessed this patient and find out whether he had his dinner or not. For more helpful information on assessment in the clinical setting, assessment from head to toe, go to dearnurses.com and there is parts one, two, and three, assessment from head to toe. Now let's take a look at aspiration pneumonia. I don't suppose some people realize how easy it is for a patient to aspirate, especially patients who are on tube feeding and like the patient who's had a traumatic brain injury. These patients have lost the ability to swallow and they get enteral feeding. And I've seen a patient whose family came to visit one time who lowered the head of that patient and that patient aspirated the tube feeding. So be aware if you have a patient on tube feeding to pay close attention while that patient is on tube feeding that the head of bed is in the right position. What some tube feedings are not, the, I'm sorry, the tube does not go into the stomach. It goes past the stomach into the uh, jejunum, then you don't have to worry about residuals, but you'd have to be aware of what type of tube that is and what the doctor's order says. Here are some helpful hints. Care plan potential for, for aspiration. Follow MD orders. Your head of bed up. Always assess things like lungs, abdominal distension, and of course the doctor always talks about residuals, how many residuals and what he wants done based on what your residuals are. So follow your doctor's instructions. Here we have a patient in cardiopulmonary arrest in the ICU. Mr. H is awake and alert when the nurse goes by. Uh, his monitor showed sinus rhythm with some PACs. He was doing just fine. Then um, she goes by and notices that he's just out. He's just not responding. So she takes the trouble to go in. She, well, the monitor alarm, I'm sorry, was going off. So she takes the trouble to go in there and notice he's unresponsive. She did the right thing. She, The nurse presses the code button to alert the ICU staff of a cardiopulmonary arrest and then she attempts to remove the gown and start CPR. American Heart has its own guidelines in place for how to assess patients. You know, it's airway breathing circulation. You know that once you get yourself involved in CPR and you're by yourself, it's not going to be easy to call for help. That's why the recommendations are first you call and then get the CPR going. Now, here we have a patient in PACU post-anesthesia care unit and some of you may not have worked in one but I've seen patient recovered in all different areas in the hospital and ICU then you may be in a sort of walk-in clinic type setting and patients are uh, sometimes recovered in these areas. One thing we should note is that when patients come out of surgery because of all the exposure of body fluids they've lost they can be very hypothermic and lack of oxygen is also another problem. It can lead to a systole, which is a very lethal arrhythmia. So here is the help so for suggestions. A patient coming out of surgery usually has oxygen. If it should not be the case, oxygen, usually anesthesia orders oxygen for these patients. So just be aware. Also, um, the lack of oxygen can predispose to a cardiac event and of course the patient when they're hypothermic there's a greater demand for oxygen so you need to follow your doctor's instruction make sure your patient's warm enough some places have warm blankets some have beer huggers whatever it might be to keep that patient nice and warm after being exposed in the surgical suite hope you've learned something from this and have a great day